Hello, I am Carol for Ease Meditation. I'm going to read you one of our member's notes with her permission. Linda's experiences. Linda is a busy mom. She tells us exactly how meditation has benefited her by making her calmer and more easily able to cope with the stresses associated with being a mother. Linda says, after the birth of my second baby, I suffered quite severely from postnatal depression. I felt so tired and anxious all the time, and I began to feel as though everything was a huge effort. I felt like a terrible mother. My children had become used to being in front of a TV for too many hours a day. I wasn't experiencing the joy of their childhood because I was so depressed. A friend persuaded me to try a meditation class with her. I was pretty dubious about the whole idea, but I persevered meditating for about 20 minutes a day, using guided meditations I found online. I began to notice that I felt less panic-stricken, less overwhelmed. I actually began to see my world differently. I felt joy again. It was as though I was awakening from an unpleasant dream to find that my reality was a whole lot nicer. Meditation is a really core principle of my life now. Through it, I have rediscovered myself. I've become a better, more patient, more insightful mother. It shows in my children's happy smiles when they see me, and they have in turn become calmer and more focused, less needy. I feel as though my generation was cheated out of learning to meditate in school, something that educators have now realized is an essential life skill. Drop your preconceived ideas about what meditation is. Just experience it, just try it. You'll be amazed at how it can change you. Rachel meditates daily to keep herself grounded and prepare herself for whatever each day will bring. Meditation helps her to be a comfort to her patients by refreshing her feelings of empathy. Rachel's story. I have worked as a caregiver for almost 10 years. I've been a caregiver to the elderly for almost for most of those years. It requires an extraordinary amount of your emotional energy and infinite amounts of patience. After my first year of nursing, I was physically and emotionally exhausted and was wondering if I could cope with it as a career. I felt emotionally drained and it started to affect my mood and my performance. I began to feel as though I was failing my patient. I had read a book about brain plasticity with aging I had read a book about brain plasticity and aging, which claimed that people who meditate are less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease in later life. The premise was that meditation is a life skill that we should all develop in. I had read a book about brain plasticity and aging, which claimed that people who meditate are less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease in later life. The premise was that meditation is a life skill that we should all develop in order to do more than just survive life. This seemed like a good idea to me, as I was surrounded by aging people with varying degrees of dementia and illness. I signed up for a guided meditation class at my local rec center and have never really looked back. I had a few lapses at the beginning, but eventually I got into the rhythm of it and made it part of my daily ritual. I find 20 to 30 minutes ideal for myself, but I have also learned to improvise and sometimes take a few minutes at work just to breathe center myself and replenish myself. I recommend starting with guided meditation, basically because it's easier to stay focused and helps you understand the concept. I found that as time went by, I was beginning to enjoy my job again. I was able to use meditation to enhance my naturally empathetic nature. It re-energized me and at the same time calmed me. It was also having a very positive effect on the rest of my life and relationships. I felt more in control and I began to trust myself and believe in myself again. Sophie has had more success with controlling her pain since she began meditating. Pain is a frame of mind, and to a certain extent, it is possible to stop pain constantly preoccupying your mind so that you can focus on other, more rewarding things. Sophie's story. My mother had bad arthritis in her old age and suffered from a lot of pain. I knew there was a fairly good chance that I would also develop it. Sure enough, at around 40, small signs of it had began to crop up. I didn't want to end up like my mother had, almost completely immobilized by the disease. So I began to research the subject and soon realized that 
other than painkillers and muscle relaxants, there wasn't much available. Luckily for me, there was an arthritis clinic attached to the hospital in my city. I took a class on meditation and relaxation to see if it would help me. They also offered exercise classes and their motto is motion is lotion, meaning that if you just keep moving, you can mitigate the effects of arthritis. At first I focused on the exercises and strengthening my core, but as the condition spread to my neck and back, the pain was often very intrusive, which curtailed the exercise somewhat. I turned to meditation. I had been practicing it on and off over the years, so I had some experience of the benefits. I learned that it is possible to think about pain differently, not to let it overwhelm you. Meditation allows me to focus on the moment, to forget the pain I'm experiencing by looking at it as something I can contain and control. Through visualization, I've trained my mind to be an observer of the pain, not to engage with it. Although this sounds terribly difficult, with the right guided meditations, anyone can learn this skill. Meditation has given me a whole new perspective on my life in general. I feel renewed and better equipped to deal with whatever comes next. Dinah's life partner was torn away from her by an early death, leaving her feeling desolate and very alone. Meditation helped her get through the pain and gave her space to mourn. Dina's story. When my husband of 15 years died unexpectedly, I was devastated. I could hardly breathe, I was in so much pain. I felt that my life was over. We had been so close to one another, it was like losing a part of myself. Weeks passed and I felt no better. It was as though everything had become dark and I dragged myself from day to day. Trying to distract myself one afternoon, I googled find happiness. The result was an assortment of sites, one of which was about guided meditation. I decided on an impulse to listen to one of the free guided meditation podcasts they offered. I chose one called Letting Go. There was no dramatic revelation or anything like it. I just felt a bit more at peace afterwards, slightly less distraught. Over the next few weeks, I listened to each podcast and meditated. And then one day I woke up feeling more refreshed than I had been. I realized it was spring. I opened my window, smelled the freshness, the perfume of the flowers. It took some time, but gradually I started to feel whole again. I felt something like happiness or at least contentment again. It was as though the terrible tide of grief that had overcome me had receded finally. I could breathe again, literally, my breath was the core of my being, the one thing that I could control. Meditation comforted me by allowing me to exist only in the moment and to look at my pain more objectively. As a result, I could deal with the process of my mourning more calmly while feeling more in touch with my inner self. I was able to comfort myself, to console myself and be kind to myself. I meditate every day of my life. It is my way of coping.